Hey, hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright with the next installment of the How to Draw series. Today we're gonna to take a look at a very interesting diagram. It comes from market failure, and the diagram is called the positive externalities of consumption. And I'm standing outside a local school here in Santiago, and I'll tell you why in a little story, a very heartwarming story about the ways in which the consumption of education can lead to incredible externalities, incredible benefits for the people around them. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, let's check it out. Well, here it is. We are going to now take a look at how to construct and how to draw the positive externalities of consumption diagram. And what you always must do in economics is figure out where the story begins. And for all of the market failure, 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 all the market failure diagrams all start with the same story. And that story is this base diagram right here. Now, because we're doing positive externalities of consumption, this is going to be the market for condoms. But the market's going to shift. But actually, the exact the, uh, the diagram that's underneath here is going to be the same. If you don't know the logic behind this diagram, check out this video right here. How to draw the base diagram for market failure. Incredibly helpful diagram, or I'm uh, sorry, video and diagram for you to understand because then you know how to begin every story. So every story in market failure starts with the same scenario and that's this diagram right here, okay? So when you get a question about market failure, just start drawing the diagram. Which diagram? This diagram. Find out what the market is in this case because it's positive externalities of, con of consumption. We're gonna talk about condoms, okay? But other than that, whether it be negative externality consumption, positive of production, positive um, of production, you're gonna start with the same exact diagram and then something's going to happen. There is always an event one event when it comes to um, um, any diagram, actually, in most studies of economics, certainly in the IB. All right, so we're talking about positive externality of consumption. That means that the consumption of something, in this case condoms, the use of condoms, is going to have an additional social benefit as a result of it being consumed. Okay, so what does that mean? What it means is that, well, first of all, before we get there, look. We are talking about what? Consumption. And in market failure, anytime you are talking about consumption, you are talking about moving this line, right? One, if it's consumption, that line's going to shift. If it's production, that line's going to get going to shift. Don't get confused. When you see consumption at the end there, negative, positive externality of consumption, just know that the line that's going to shift is this one. If you see production, it's going to be this one. Okay. Get that in your head is really helpful. All right, let me erase that. So we know that because of consumption, something is going to happen here. Okay, well, what is happening here? When a couple uses a condom, the total benefit of the use of that condom actually extends beyond the use of that condom for that particular couple. So as a result of that, what happens is you have a situation where, oh, wrong one. You have a situation where the private use of a condom is actually, or the private benefit of a condom is actually less than what it could be, okay? What does that mean? It means that the, 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 when, you, when a condom is used, and this is a new price-quantity combination. Let me finish doing this. P2, Q2, right? When a condom is being used, the benefit extends beyond the couple, right? Why? Because the use of a condom prevents the passing of sexually transmitted diseases. And those sexually transmitted diseases obviously could then be passed on to, to partners that those people may have in the future. So actually by using a condom, the couple is not only protecting themselves against the transmission of sexually transmitted diseases and, and of course, pregnancy, but if it's if the couple is a man and a woman, or it's and it's also protecting future partners of those people, right? Um, for 
for, from them contracting a, a sexually transmitted disease. So when you think about that, and that's something that's really, really important, is that you realize that actually the private benefit, the private benefit of the use of that condom is actually less than what the total social benefit is. Okay, another way of looking at this is, is that when the, when the condom was purchased, P1Q, wait, all right, switch it around. If everybody used a condom, yeah, there would be no passing on of sexually transmitted diseases, correct? In theory, yes. Okay, so what that means, the socially optimal point is this point right here. And this is a common thing that I've been doing in all of these diagrams. Where do you want to be? You want to be at dot B because that is where there's an efficient allocation of resources. The use of a condom is a good thing for sure, but let's face it, not all people who have sex with one another are using a condom. So in this scenario, the condoms are actually under-consumed, which is to say that the government would be interested in increasing the consumption of condoms, meaning the usage of condoms. And the way that we can show that is we extend that line up there, and all of a sudden we have the existence of something called the potential welfare gain of a economy, okay? So if I, let me finish drawing this and then I'll uh, add one more point. So if that's A and that is C, okay? So we have A, B, and C, all right. So here's the thing, let me start over. In a perfect world, everybody would use a condom. And if everybody used a condom when they, when they were involved in some sort of sexual activity, guess what? The market would be operating at point B. But that's not true, right? And so actually, the, 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 the market operates at P2, Q2. It's just a way of thinking about it, right? Okay. So now the market is operating here. And that means that the private benefit, the marginal private benefit, is less than the marginal social benefit, okay? So in other words, if more condoms were consumed, then there would be, it would be better for society as a whole. So this triangle A, B, C represents the potential welfare gain of some government program to increase the use of condoms. And if you are in university and you go into the health clinic, undoubtedly there, well, I don't know, undoubtedly, in most universities in the United States, at least, you go into the health clinic and they give condoms away. Why are they giving condoms away? Well, because they know that students are, gonna, are, are going to have sexual interactions with one another. And as a result of that, they want to promote the uses of condoms. Why? Because they're underused, right? They're under um, consumed. And so by giving away to buy free, to what the, the, the economy is trying to do, or in this case, the university is trying to do, is to reduce and move out this marginal private benefit out there so that the condoms are there's more use of condoms. In other words, you close the gap between Q2 and Q1 to a point like right there, okay? So I'm not talking about solutions in this video. If you want to see solutions for positive externalities of consumption, check out that video right there. But this is just how to draw the diagram and what the logic behind it is. All right, well, there it is. The positive externalities of consumption. And in there, of course, I used education as the example. And let me tell you a story about a girl I knew that is uh, from the local community here where I live in Santiago. Chile has a really incredible program and at, at some of the best universities in all of the world. And the best schools in this country are public, which means that they're free. They're free for those who get the right grades that they need in order to, to get into school. And that, that has to do both with the grades in which they get in their high school classes, but also on an entrance exam. And one of these girls whose mother only had an eighth grade education went to a local school. She worked hard. She consumed as much education as she could. She got the equivalent of straight A's, which is the, the, the it was like right around seven. 6.9 is the highest you can possibly really get out of seven in the Chilean system. And guess what? She got into the most prestigious school in all of Chile, the Universidad de Chile, which is one of the top 200 universities in the whole world. And now just think about how that will change generationally her family.
right? By the fact that she will now have a university degree, it's free, she can attend this school for free, and as a result, there will be all of these positive externalities of her consumption of that university. It's an incredible story, and it's why government spends so much money on trying to promote certain things in education, in healthcare, in those things, those kinds of merit goods that governments want us to consume. So remember that story, positive externalities of consumption, a really powerful concept, and that's why I'm standing here in Santiago outside this local school, because every kid that goes here has the chance to change their family for generations to come. Good deal, my friends. Take care of yourselves out there. Send me your stories, share your ideas in the comment box below if you have any other ideas for, for uh, future videos. I'll be happy to listen to them and produce them whenever you want. All right, my friends, be good out there. Be careful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.